This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. It can happen in an instant. One moment a child can be perfectly safe, and the next, fighting for her life. As Leah Eads and her husband, Deward, found out on August 13th, 1991, at their home in Renton, Washington. It was late in the afternoon. I was babysitting my two grandchildren, Kendra and Jared. My husband was asleep on the lawn chair. Kendra asked me if she could go in and get a graham cracker, and I told her yes, and come right back out. Oh, Kendra. Automatically, I'm thinking she must be cut somewhere. So I looked her over and didn't see anything right there on the spot. So I carried her on into the kitchen and put her on the counter and kept looking her over. Is she bleeding? And then she stiffened up all of a sudden and just went completely limp. And at that time is when I seen the blood pumping out of her chest cavity. It was just a fountain of blood. I have never seen anyone lose blood like that before. I took her pulse and there's no pulse and, and also there's no breathing. Kendra, I put up. my right hand over the wound. So then I started giving her mouth to mouth. Kendra, wake up. But I, I could feel the air that I was blowing into her little body was just blowing right through her system and bubbling right out, out under my right hand. Ceasefire Medical Operator. Yes, I need an aid cross, please. At what address? 319. Dispatcher Michelle Locko took the call for help. Is that a house or an apartment? House. What's the problem there? Um, my do granddaughter ran through a, a storm door, and uh, she's bleeding bad, and I think she's in shock. Or... How old is she? She's five. It was a glass storm door? Yes, uh-huh. I pictured a basic life support call. You know, probably lacerations, but nothing, nothing life-threatening. A 12 and injured child, 2319 Northeast Street. Rescue workers from the Renton Fire Department were dispatched to the scene. Where is she bleeding from? Um, down by her heart. Where? It's in her chest. Tell me how deep the cut is. I, I don't know. It's spurting out. I immediately realized it was a very serious situation. A child can't sustain the kind of blood loss that an adult can for the simple reason they don't have that much blood in their body. Is that her crying? No, that's a baby. Okay, she, she conscious? She's uh, incoherent. What do you mean incoherent? She isn't talking or anything. Please, just hurry him. Ma'am, they're already being dispatched, okay? My job is to talk to you and find out more information. Okay, I really Ex don't know. I okay, don't know. Okay, ma'am, you have to calm down in order to help your grandchild. I, I know, I know. Tell me what incoherent means. Is she awake? No, she isn't. Is she able to breathe? Uh, my husband is breathing into her. She's not breathing? Really? Yes, he's, they are. Is she breathing? Uh, I don't know. Can you check? Put the phone down and Is she and breathing to her? No. No, she isn't. Information about the seriousness of the little girl's condition was immediately passed on to the rescuers. Five-year-old that went through a storm door appears to have severe chest lacerations. The child is now unconscious. Fire one, medic fire. The King County Advanced Life Support Unit was also sent to help, but it was 10 miles away. 
Is she still bleeding? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the blood bubbling out of her chest? It, it was spurting out. My husband has his hand over it, so... Okay, does he have it completely sealed with his hand? Yes, uh-huh. The possibility that she would die in front of her grandmother and her grandfather went through my mind. piece of saran wrap or something plastic that he can put over that injury, okay? All right. You put the phone down, do that, and come All back. All right, I will. Putting plastic wrap on the chest wound would have sealed the injury until the aid crew arrived, and it would have prevented the air from moving in and out of the body and prevented a collapsed lung. but she didn't come back to the phone. And without knowing why she didn't return to the phone, all I could do was imagine, maybe she was already dead. When we continued, there was no heart rhythm at all, no electrical activity at all, nothing that would keep that little person alive. When Kendra Eads' heart stopped beating after breaking a glass storm door, Deward Eads and his wife Leah did all they could to try and save her. But despite their best efforts, they were losing the battle to keep their five-year-old granddaughter alive. Hey. EMT Mark Bram got to the scene within four minutes. As we approached the residence, a gentleman out front flagged us over, and uh, I'll never forget very solemnly he looked at me and said, I don't think she's going to make it. Read on back. I checked her immediately for vitals to see if she had a pulse or any respiration. She had none. Let's get her down to the floor. I lowered her to the floor where we had room to work on her. You that blanket there, ma'am? I asked my partner to start breathing for her with a bag valve mask. Get ready to bag, Tom. We got CPR. A12 all incoming units, we've got child CPR going. Okay, but we're going to be late in traffic here. Paramedic Mel McClure and his partner were still more than five miles away. It was tremendously frustrating to be fighting the traffic, knowing they were doing CPR on this little girl. And the thing that goes through my mind then is, is it possible for us to make it there in time? The members from our engine company entered the house and uh, hooked her up to 100% oxygen and to our heart monitor. Stop CPR? But uh, there was no heart rhythm at all, no electrical activity at all, okay. nothing that would keep that little person alive. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Good. I wanted to trade places with her. I just didn't want this perfect little girl to have to go through something like this. And I can just see her slipping away. Hey, bag. After a few okay, cycles of CPR, we'll stop right. and check for a pulse. And uh, if there's no activity at all, we'll just continue CPR. You never want to give up. You never want to quit. When the paramedics arrived, they immediately commenced advanced life support. When we walked in, I looked at the monitor. It was flatlined. To me, that said that uh, she had bled to death. We took the attitude that we were going to resuscitate this little girl. We wanted to be very aggressive and bring her back. The first problem was how to replenish the massive blood loss. It was more than just dripping fluids. We were squeezing the bags to force it in as rapidly as we could. Okay, everybody quiet so Tom can listen to breath sounds. The chances of surviving from traumatic cardiac arrest is pretty grim. It's very hard to work on a dead five-year-old girl, very hard. Everyone's emotional pitch is tuned up to a higher degree. Everybody wants to save this little girl. And all the time there's a voice in the back of your head saying, go, go, go. After more than 10 minutes, they finally got a sign of life. Gentlemen, I got a pulse. Five-year-old Kendra was then taken to a landing zone set up at a nearby school where a helicopter was waiting to transport her to a trauma center 20 miles away. 
When we loaded her into the helicopter, we all felt just a real sense of accomplishment. And I took a report over to the truck and happened to overhear the radio transmission to the hospital. And I heard a clipboard slam against the ground. And I turned around to look at Mel and he said, he just heard over the radio that they started CPR in the helicopter. And I walked away from the truck and looked at the guys and just said, we lost her. We'd gotten that far and she died anyway. The flight nurses managed to restart her heart one more time. The little girl was admitted to Harborview Medical Center under the care of trauma surgeon Timothy Pullman. She was in critical condition. In a situation like this, death can occur very quickly. It's imperative to get him quickly to the operating room. We need to from here to here. Where is she? Where is she? Kendra's parents, Kathy and Alan Eads, rushed to the hospital as soon as they heard what had happened. It's just a horrible feeling of just sitting there waiting. You feel very numb, just waiting for word of how she's doing. I just kept thinking, my Kendra, my little baby. Okay, let's go. All right. Bye. Bye. We first encountered bleeding from a severed artery, which we were able to stop very easily. From there, we proceeded to open her abdomen, thinking the next injury would be in her abdomen from the stab wound. But when we opened her abdomen, she then sustained her third cardiac arrest and I was certain that she was not going to survive and make it off the table. In desperation, we opened the left side of her chest, and we found a piece of glass that was uh, protruding from the heart. We were very surprised. I've never encountered a patient with a piece of glass sticking out of her heart. Hi. Hi, I'm Dr. Pullman. I'm Brady and Kendra. I told Kendra's mother and father that I didn't think there was better than a 25% chance that she would survive and that if she did survive, Kendra would probably have brain damage from the period when her heart had stopped pumping blood to her brain. We saw her being wheeled out of the elevator, covered in white sheets with tubes hanging and her eyes closed, and, and she, her hands were blood-stained. And uh, it, it was... Uh, an awful thing to see. Kendra was transferred to Children's Hospital and Medical Center, where she was placed in a drug-induced coma to give her the best chance to heal. Okay. We didn't know if she could hear us, so we talked to her like she could. I told her that I loved her. And I was with her. We were at her bedside all the time from 6.30 in the morning till 10 at night. And it, in the evenings, we slept in a motorhome out in the parking lot. If she woke up and asked for us, we wanted to be right there to comfort her. As the days went by, Kendra's condition began to deteriorate. A medical team, including cardiologist Isamu Kawabori, discovered that the wound in her heart wasn't healing. We were able to inject a special dye and we could see the heart chambers and we could see that that hole was very large and causing her heart to fail. And so this was also affecting her lungs and her other organ systems. Kendra needed emergency surgery, but there was a chance her heart might be too weak to survive it. I had no idea. I had no idea if I was going to see her or not. See her alive again. Kendra Eads underwent four hours of delicate open-heart surgery. Two months later, she made an amazing recovery. Kendra has no restrictions on her play. She can do everything that all the other kids can do. There are a lot of people involved in how well she's doing now. There's, there's hardly any words to express how grateful we are to them for bringing back our daughter. A lot of people help me and I'm happy about that. There is no way that I can ever repay what they did. I am very thankful they gave me my little girl back.
The real heroes here were the grandparents because they were the ones that started the rescue breathing for this little girl. That bought us the time that we needed to save her. Every person, every mother, every father, every child who's old enough should know CPR, not only adult CPR, but infant and child CPR as well. Mm. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> they took me to the hospital and got me all better so I could go home like I am now. I'm glad I'm home now so I can pray with my brother. You shouldn't eat here. You should eat food or stuff like that. When I see her playing, I just want to sit and soak it in and realize what a miracle she is. I just love her with all my heart.